Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Shooting Tips from the Pros. Our pro this week is Kaylee Browning. This whole episode is going to be on trap shooting, and we chose one of the top, top trap shooters in the world. Um, Kaylee is, has been number one lady in the nation. She's won several World Cup medals. She's a 2020 Olympian. And so let's get started. We've asked um, our audience for some of their questions that they have for her. So those are what we're going to go over today. We're doing eye dominance, what her mental routine is before shooting, um, some of the ways she practices at home just during quarantining. So let's get started. Welcome, Kaylee, to Shooting Tips with the Pros. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. We can't wait. So our first question today that we'd like to ask you comes from Victoria. And she has asked, what's the difference between different trap shooting disciplines? So American, Olympic, international, bunker, some of the words that we've heard before. If you can explain to us the difference. Sure. So um, basically, bunker trap and international trap are the same thing. Um, bunker is kind of like a slang term for international trap. Um, and basically the difference from that, from American Trap, is International Trap has an underground bunker that hosts 15 machines. Um, the angles are a lot harder. They can go from anywhere between 45 degrees left and 45 degrees right, and they can also vary in height. So they can go up to 3 meters high, whereas American Trap only hosts one single machine that isolates, and the height is the same. Um, American Trap is going about 42 miles an hour on average, and International Trap is going about 68 on average, depending where you're at. Um, and the targets, too, vary in um, speed, so they're set to a distance, not a speed. So, you know, your hard lefts and your hard rights are going to be a little bit faster or slower than your straightaways. That's neat. I did not know that, that the speed is set to the distance. Yeah, the distance, the target is set to a distance, and then the speed um, is kind of off of that to get it to that distance. Very interesting. So you are doing Olympic, you're doing international trap in the Olympics, the 2020 Olympics? Yes, I shoot the international trap, and that's what I'll be competing in in the 2020 Olympics. Well, I guess 2021 Olympics now, so. Yes, and congratulations for making it. That's huge. Thank you. All right, a uh, second question comes from Hossein, and he says, do you clearly see the targets from the beginning of the trap house to where you break the clay? So he's asking, where do your international seem super, super fast? So um, where do you first see the trap come, the clay coming out of the trap house? Yeah, that's a really good question, and it's best explained if I show you through my shotgun video. So I'm gonna open up my iPad and show you and explain it on that. Okay, so here is the shot cam video I've uploaded from my iPad. So the red dot is the shot cam and it's attached to my bottom barrel. The red dot is where I'm going to have my hold point for my gun. I'm going to draw a little dot right here. That is about where I hold my eyes. And then I'm also going to draw two little lines right here. Um, this is what I do when I set up my vision. So I make almost like a little window or a little box. Um, that way it lets me, it lets my eyes be wide enough so I can catch the target if it's a little bit off of this mark right here. Um, sometimes they come off a little bit left, sometimes they come off a little bit right. And if you do it this way, then, uh, you'll be able to catch the target. So that's how I set up my, uh, eyes. Now pay attention to the red dot. So the target comes out right here, and if you notice, the red dot does not move at all. What is happening right here is when the target gets right about here, which would be a little bit above my gun barrel, my eyes shoot over to the target, latch onto the target, but it's still not clear to me yet. And as soon as I feel like I've got a good, clear connection with the target, I'm going to start my move straight to the target. Now, can I maintain visual clarity on the target through the whole shot? Yes, because I'm able to shoot this way. So from right here, no, it is not very clear, but I'm aware of the target and I can see the flash. 
as soon as I start to move, which is about right here, you can see the red dot is moving, that is when the target is clear to me and I am able to maintain a clear focus on the target all the way through the shot. That's super interesting. Kaylee, thanks for the visuals uh, that just explain everything that you're talking about. So that was Hossein's question about where you see the clay coming out. Next question comes from Joel. I am right eye dominant. So should I close my left eye? We get this question a lot at Shot Cam. Left eye, right eye. Typically in shooting, you've got both eye, eyes open. So what if you have a right eye dominant shooter, should they shoot with one eye closed? So assuming that if they're right eye dominant, I'm just assuming that they are shooting left handed, so they're cross dominant. Um, that has, this question has two different answers. So basically to kind of sum it up, if you are a shooter who is going out to shoot with your buddies or maybe you shoot just a couple times a year, you don't really care about progressing in the sport, I would say, you know, just shoot shoot with one eye closed or you can even put um, a patch over your dominant eye um, and or even like some chapstick, something to blur that out so you can continue to shoot. Um, but if you are wanting to progress in the game, um, I would highly suggest working with a quote unquote pro on eye dominancy issues because I don't want to make it sound like it's impossible to do. It's going to be very difficult to make the switch over, but it is possible with um, putting some work into it. And that is exactly what it's going to take because naturally your dominant eye wants to take over. So you're either going to have to learn, uh, you're either going to have to build up your eye that's not quite as dominant or you're going to have to shoot either right-handed to become right eye dominant and right-handed. So um, without watching the person shoot that's really kind of hard to determine and only you know your goals so um if you if your goals are to progress in the shoot and you want to take it competitively and be as best as possible i would highly suggest getting somebody that knows um that's an expert in that field right. explain really yeah. quickly the the chapstick thing <laughs> so you can so let's say i'm let's say i'm right eye dominant it, but i'm left-handed so i'm shooting left-handed so when I shoot left-handed, my right eye wants to take over, which makes me look down the side of the barrel because my right eye is looking down and I'm, left, I'm shooting left-handed. So you can take some chapstick or a piece of tape or something to cover up this eye without actually having to close your eye and it will make your left eye take over. Very interesting. Little insider tip. All right, next question comes from James. He says, um, can you tell me about your mental rehearsal before an event? Yes, so my mental rehearsal changes per event and what I mean by that is I use the same techniques but I'm not always in the same headspace. So, you know, whatever's going on in my personal life, if training's not going very good or if training is going very good, you know, there's a bunch of different variables that are going to affect the way that I'm thinking. So what I've done and what I found best to handle that is come up with a pre-shot routine. So basically a pre-shot routine is something that gives your mind a job. You have to have a purpose. So your purpose is to go out there and break one target at a time. How do you do that? So for me personally, um, and this is adjusted, you know, per shooter, what works for you. But for me personally, I make sure that all of my mechanics are set um, properly from what I've been training on. And then I also go through some breathing techniques. Um, if I can kind of focus on my breathing, then it helps ease your mind. It helps make those fear-based thoughts that tend to come in like, ooh, I'm straight, I need to, you know, I don't need to miss or I'm gonna shoot a 24 or my competitor just shot a, a 25 and I'm straight, I need to, you know, whatever those fear-based thoughts are that are coming in, breathing really helps. And um, another thing that really helps is focusing on what you have trained for for so long. So um, anything that is familiar to you is gonna give you confidence, like, I'm familiar, familiar with my pre-shot routine and my technique that I do when I shoot. So focusing on those things allow me to be able to shoot tension free. That's great. And I think just pearls of wisdom there, breaking one target at a time. I think trap shooting is so hard compared to other disciplines with, it's just trap, you know, next one, next one, next one. 
um, and focusing one at yeah. a time. I think that's that's really good. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Jim, and this one this question is about choke. So if you're not familiar or not super familiar with shotgun shooting, um, the choke is the metal piece that you put at the end of your muzzle, and it's a uh, tapered constriction that affects the the pattern of your pellet so you can basically have a tighter pattern or a wider one and so this one comes this question comes from jim he says kaylee do you prefer fixed chokes or interchangeable chokes meaning do you like it set in the gun or do you like to be able to adapt it also what's your favorite choke size so i have two answers for that um if i'm shooting competitively i shoot a sporting barrel which allows me to be able to interchange my chokes. Um, and the combination I shoot is, I shoot it improved modified on my bottom barrel, so for my first shot, and then my second shot, I shoot a full choke. Um, but if I am hunting, I like to shoot fixed barrels. I like to shoot the parkours, particularly from Craig Off, um, just because they're a little bit lightweight. And if you're, you know, you've got your dog and you're carrying your gun all day hunting, they're a lot easier to maneuver. I also like to shoot the fixed chokes and the parkours in sporting clays and V-tests because they're a lot easier for me to start with a low mount and get up a little bit quicker than um, my trap gun is set up. That's so interesting. I didn't even know that. So, um, right, next question comes from Morgan. And he said, what's the best way to stop gun canting? So gun canting is a tilted mount, which you can often see if you're using a shot cam video or if someone's just standing behind you. So he's saying, if, if my gun is consistently canted, how can I stop that? That's a good question. Um, again, that's one that's hard to answer um, without watching the person, but just the two main things that it could be would be one, you have to understand why are you canning the gun? Is it a gun fit issue or is it your mechanics? So if it's a gun fit issue, I can't really explain without looking at somebody, you know, to see why they're actually canning the gun. Um, if it's a mechanical issue and the gun fits you, more than likely, um, just what I've seen in coaching, is when you're mounting the gun and your shooter has this right arm pulled all the way up here, naturally the butt pad of the gun curves a little bit. So you kind of curve your gun with it and that's one of the main causes that causes um, canting of the gun if it's a mechanic issue. There can also be some other factors too that play into that, but those two things are the two that I see most often, either it's poor gun fit and the person is trying to cant the gun so that you know the barrel lines up for them, or it's bad mechanics and they just they just truly don't know how to mount the gun and it's causing them to can it. Okay, awesome. And our last question today, Kaylee, comes from Garrett. And he says, uh, what are ways to practice at home? And I'm assuming he's asking this just under our current circumstances, but what are ways that uh, shooters can be practicing even if they're off the range? So ideally, if you have a trap machine at home, that would be awesome uh, to be able to do that. But if you don't, um, there are a couple different drills that you can do um, at home. And one of those is gun mounts. You know, obviously gun mounts are great. And I suggest doing those in a mirror so you can watch yourself, you know, how you mount the gun, are you mounting it straight? If, it, if the canting was a problem and you're working on that, make sure you're working on not canting the gun in the mirror. Um, another one you can do is an eye drill. You can set up some different things on a wall and have your gun mounted. And when you call pull, you can get your eyes to whatever you're looking at and then make the move to um, your target. But eye drills are working the eyes really fast. Um, and then my favorite probably of all, and one of the ways that I use the shot cam the most is video analysis. So if you are or have been training, um, you know, with your shot cam on or your video on, go back and watch those videos and analyze yourself. Say, you know, did I make a good move here? How was my footwork? Did my eyes leave first? And kind of diagnose yourself. That's the best way to learn. And those are also really good things to do while you're at home. That's awesome. For anyone who's not familiar with a shot cam, a shot cam is a uh, gun camera that just mounts right onto your, under your barrel. It tracks movement, so it knows when to record and when not to record. Um, we watched some of Kaylee's videos earlier. And um, and so, Kaylee, thank you so much for your time today. It was fantastic. Jam packed with knowledge. We're super um, honored to have you, honestly. 
and wish you all the best in your Olympics uh, next year. So lots of practicing. Yes, thank um, you to so follow, much. To learn more about Kaylee, you can follow her on Instagram. Um, she's got tons of exciting stuff coming on. She's got a YouTube channel. Uh, she's got a new shooting range opening up with David Radulovic. She's available for coaching and can even do online coaching. Um, so follow Kaylee on, on Instagram and comment below if you have any additional questions. She and I are going to be monitoring and answering all of your comments. So we look forward to, uh, to any more that you have. And if you love it, then we'd love to do another one with Kaylee. Thanks so much for watching.